Come on, CFL, presented by Come On Now, the podcast, partnered with Bet99 Sports. This is episode six, and you're rolling with Nikki T. For the next week of CFL games, what happened last week, what's going on this week, who we betting with, how Nick do last week on his bets. All of that and more. Power rankings, baby. We ready to roll, man. Um, y'all see I don't have Rudy with me today. I am solo. I'm hosting. And I'm coming to you with it all, baby. Everything CFL we are diving into today. The first thing we're going to do is dive into last week games and what happened, what went on. So we're going to call this what's happen, happening in in what's happening in in. <laughs> In the CFL. Uh, so last week, man, let's start off with BC goes to Winnipeg. And right when I thought Winnipeg was on the ropes of their season being over, they come out with a masterpiece football game as a whole. Talking about putting it all together um, with special teams, defense, and the offense all coming together and working together as one, and you get the complete game like that. Um, that's what we got from Winnipeg. Um, Sergio Castillo, six for six for field goals, a 60 yard bomb. Again, he does it again. And Zach Calero's getting the offense rolling, the receivers rolling him in Ontario. Wilson, Pokey Wilson, they are finding a special connection, 112 yards receiver for him. 295 for Zach. Um, pretty good game, man. Pretty clean game for them. I think they had one turnover on downs on the quarterback sneak. They have to they have to fix that problem with their quarterback sneaks. With Strebler, supposed to be an automatic first down. And right now, it looks like it's real iffy with the push the O-line is getting and Strebler finding a, a pouch to run through. But all credit to their defense, man. Their defense come out against Vernon Adams, who was having an MOP year throwing over 300 yards per game, and they hold him to 74 yards in, in in a game? He was throwing for that in one drive, let alone the whole game. So Winnipeg comes out with the stout defense. They give nothing up to Vernon. Vernon just looks out of it the whole game. This is two weeks in a row. Um, they had it coming off a of bye week. You would think that they had a little bit better game plan for Winnipeg, but they are notoriously um, – known for not winning games in Winnipeg. They got a couple over the past couple of years, but Winnipeg just normally plays really good at home, and they play good against BC. Even the earlier game this year, it came down to the end, and um, BC pulled it out. But they just stymied on Vernon Adams to 74 yards. Their offense as a whole, come on now, their offense as a whole had – Four first downs. And that was three of Vernon Adams before he got hurt. That's not the BC offense that we're thinking that they've been showing up the whole year. And they get Keon Hatcher back, um, a dynamic, one of the top receivers in the league, come back early from his Achilles injury last year in the West Finals. And the man, and it looked like they threw off their offense a little bit to get back in their rhythm. Justin McKinnis had zero catches, but Winnipeg on second down just went three man rush. Three man rush every time on second down. They spied with Biggie on Vernon Adams a little bit, but they collapsed the pocket with three people. Um Willie Jefferson, Garbutt, um, the other D linemen, and they were just phenomenal. Um gave up nothing. Um when the team has 102 net yards total offense in a game. That's hard to win. I don't. I don't care what happens. You're not gonna win like that. Um, I think the the game plan against BC has been, hey, play them in man. Let's guard the receivers in man. Let's spy Vernon Adams, and let's see what they can do. Let's 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 go out there. Winnipeg had eight DBs on the field for every second down. Eight DBs. So they took the linebackers out and they put an extra DB in. They gave them, you know, they know BC wants to throw the ball. They want to push the ball. And they took away the little short throws. They like to throw the little short throws to get in, like, nice manageable situations or 
even on second and five, the little short throws and let the receivers fall forward. And Winnipeg just took that away the whole game. And um, Trey Ford gets, I mean, Tyrell Ford, the brother of Trey Ford, we'll talk about him later, gets an interception, changed the game, flipped the game around early. Um, defense gets four interceptions, two turnovers. Um, just the highlights performance by the defense this, that week, man. Um, kudos to Winnipeg getting back on the roll. They needed that game because that was definitely a season-defining win. They needed it. They came in that game at two and six. They go to two and seven. It doesn't look so good for them, especially with Calgary getting the win. Um, so that's what happened that game, man. What a game by their defense. Um, Brady Oliveira, um, over 100 yards on the dot. Um, good game for them. Um, the next game we have in that week, we have, been, we have um, Montreal versus Hamilton. Um, Montreal is a freaking good team, man. All around. Backup quarterback and all. He started off a little slow, um, my guy Davis Alexander. But he got it rolling later on as the game progressed. He got a little bit more comfortable as being the starting quarterback. Um, he he came out with a decent performance, 19 for 27, 262, one touchdown. Um, but that defense, man, they gave Bo Levi hell all night long. Two interceptions. Um, Bo could just never was comfortable, man. Um, 29 for 42, two interceptions, 240. Um, they end up pulling him and pulling it, putting Taylor on um, the backup quarterback in later on in the game. But 33 to 16 Montreal, they just are a amazing team, a complete team. And they look like they are going back to the championship. I will have them as a bet and favorite to come out the East. And, and we know once it gets to the playoffs, it's just literally who's hotter at that moment, who has a better day. But more than likely, I think I was setting up that Montreal will have the better days than any team going forward in the playoffs at this at this point. Ottawa looked good, but how will they look against the big bad beast is, is, is Montreal is? Tyrese Bellarette is having a defense defensive player of the year type of type of year. He's just everywhere on the field. Number twenty six for Montreal is everywhere on the field. Wherever the ball is, that's what that guy is, man. The uh, weak side linebacker, he's, a, he's he's something special, man. He had a sack, two tackles for a loss, um, and they just absolutely annihilate Hamilton after Hamilton was trying to get back in the East contention um, in the race after they had two wins in a row. Um, didn't get one this game. Montreal, um, Noel Thorpe, and Jason Moss have this team firing on all cylinders. They're fun to watch. And I, I want to see, can they pull off the the back-to-back the -back championship? That's a feat that not many teams are able to pull off. But when you have a momentum and the fire is hot, you have to strike. And they are a team that's showing you can win with your backup quarterback. That's good. Not many teams can do that. And you have to have a good backup quarterback in this league because more than likely, just playing the game of football, injuries happen so often. And quarterbacks in position, they get hit a lot. Um, they're not as strong, you know, as the other players that's tackling them, like the D-linemen who's 300 pounds and DNs who's 260. So they tend to get hurt. There's a lot of hits. It's 18 games in a season. So if you don't have a backup quarterback in this league, more than likely you're not going to get to where you got to go because they probably have to come in for two, three, four games in a season and hold a fort. And that's what um, my guy Davis Alexander is doing to Cody get back. And Cody should be back soon. He practiced last week limited. So I will expect him to be back soon. In the next game of the week, we had Edmonton go to Mon go to Saskatchewan and get the win. 42 to 31. So you're telling me they make a change at quarterback and they get the first win of the season. Coincidence? Hmm. I think not. The offense looked Great in the, the mop up duty Trey Ford came in last week against Hamilton. And it looked like their, their their team just gets energized when this young kid is in the game because they know how dynamic he is. And last year the kid won five games for them. They didn't win no games before that. This year, they come back this season, they bench him, they bring in McLeod Bethel, and they don't win games again. I'm 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 starting to see difference maker for that team. 
and it's Trey Ford, the one Trey Ford. He's t- turning things around over there in Edmonton. He comes in. He gets them to score 42 points after Saz come out with the opening kick return by Alfred, and they change the game. He throws for over 250, um, 18 for 22, so he's pretty efficient. He had one interception. Okay, we'll live with that. But what he does for that team, he opens up the run game. And when Sass, who normally plays pretty good defense for the season, gives up 276 yards rushing, you won't win much games like that. And Trey Ford brings that dynamic because you have to focus so much on him. Your ends have to watch him. Your linebacker has to watch him. And that's leaving gaping holes for the running back to take over. So you get my guy, Javon Leeds, go for 12 to 12 carries for 169. So every carry he had was basically a big run and three touchdowns. And he still had three catches for 22, 26 yards. So the man just had an amazing game, but that is all opened up by Trey Ford. Just what happened last year with Kevin Brown. Trey Ford opened up the, the season for him. At the beginning of the year, he was averaging 40 yards a game. And then Trey Ford comes in, and the holes are so much different because the defense is – and defensive coordinators are pulling out their hair. The little hair that these defensive coordinators do have is only a couple of them, but here left, I think, Monson and, and maybe uh, Edmonton defensive coordinator. But he don't have to stress. He this he's you know, and, and my guy over there in uh in Ottawa, uh, defensive coordinator. They, he has his hair, but most of the league they're they're pulling out their hair their hair when they have to play Trey Ford because he puts you in so much of a bind on how to cover to guard him because your ends you can't crash him down because if they crash down and don't contain he's gonna do the RPO and he's gonna shoot out of there and nobody can catch him. The guy runs a four three. He's freaking fast and he's six feet, he's small, he's agile, and he still could throw the ball sixty yards down the field on the run, off balance. So that dynamic you 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 have to send a a, a cover zero blitz to kind of contain him, but then that leaves you out there one on one and Anything can happen, and then he breaks the containment. You think you have him in line, and he, he gets out the pocket, and now you have a 60, 70 yard touchdown given up on your head. And you just, all your focus is on this guy because he's so elite and what he could bring. And it was just dynamic for him to see because in that game, Stas, Jay Patterson played a good game. He had over 300 yards. I mean, little spotty, 22 for 38, throwing the ball, but over 300 yards, that's a good game. They scored 31 points, but you give up 42. And Sass takes the lead. They take the lead 22 to 20 by a dynamic catch by a Jewel Jew. And Edmonton's not phased. Even as they're a 0 and 7, 0 and 18, they know with Trey Ford, they always have a chance to control the game, the, the, the time possession of the clock. The defense don't have to do so much. They don't have to be on the field so much because the offense is on the field. And they're limiting, limiting. The, 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 the amount of time the defense has to be out there to make mistakes and be as bad as they've been the whole year. And now the defense is like, shoot, we only got to get a couple stops a game because we're only going to be out there for about five, six possessions, and and we have a good chance of winning. So that would happen that game. That's And, you could, and you're and you going to tell me as a coach you got fired because you didn't want to start the quarterback who got you wins last year because he's a Canadian quarterback and you think somebody else is going to come in and be better. The team did not respond well to McLeod Bethel this year. And it could be because of his complaining about short rest days for games when they play on five days rest. Um, You can complain about that after the season. You, you're not changing that during that season. And your team followed behind you in that suit because they're not hyped up because your quarterback is out there complaining about the rest rather than going out there and leading the team and galvanizing them, galvanizing them to, to get the win. And when you don't do that, they see that and they see the complaints. Even though you say that you're fighting for them at this moment, we we need you to fight for us on the field to get us the wins because that's all that matters. This is what our livelihood depends on, getting wins. We don't get wins. We're out the door. Your your contract is damn near guaranteed. You make a lot. But the rest of these players, a lot of these players on this team are not making what you're making. So they need to win to to solidify their spots on these rosters and keep their, their careers going and feed their family. and that's the difference between Trey. Trey Ford just want to play ball. He like, man, five-day rest. The other team is on a short-day rest also. So, F it. Let's go out there. Let's ball, especially after a loss. My things after a loss, I wanted to get back there as soon as possible. I didn't care about no damn short rest. 
I like, then what I have to do, take my day off, you get another day off, you walk through, you get one day of practice, and you're ready to ball again. We got another chance to get a win. And that's how you have to get that in the rest of the, in the mind of your teammates to be ready to go. And if you don't do that, they're not going to play for you like you want them to play, and nobody wants to win. And then your head coach don't start the guy who should be starting because they think they bring you in with the receiver group that they get to, to, to throw the ball out and air it out. But, no, y'all should be a running team. And when Kevin, Kevin Brown comes back, I got a decision to make because at first I wanted – I didn't think Leach should get the ball because he was always a turnover. But now I'm saying, damn, maybe we didn't give Leach the ball enough. And you put him with Kevin Brown, you got to find out as an offensive coordinator, Jerry Jackson, um, off the, um, the head coach, interim head coach. Still, I'm pretty sure he's calling plays. You have to find a way how to get both of these guys on the field with Trey Ford. And it might be – Time to do something with the receivers that's being high paid on that team because this is a running team. You run the ball, you make the defense come up, and then you, you take your shot when they're seven or eight in the box and everybody else is on the island. And that's what I have for that game, man. Um, good game by Trey Ford um, and Javon Leaks. The next game we're going into, um, the last game of the week, was Toronto and Calgary. Woo! Calgary wins that game 27 to 23. Good win for them. They're 4 0 at home. They find a way to come back with 21 unanswered points. They were down 23 to 6, I want to say. Um, in the fourth quarter, they get the win to their back and they're able to throw the ball and air the ball out more and they get some stops on defense. Relentless pressure by the D line. They get six sacks that day. Mike Rose have two sacks. He gets off the, he gets off the, uh, off the no sack list and gets a couple. But you know, once you get one, you get two. They start coming in bunches for the um the All Star. Um, but the defense played well in the second half. Jake Myers plays terrific in the second half, over two hundred yards. When the offense looked relatively dead the first half, and Toronto looked well, and Cameron Dukes is running. He has ninety five yards rushing, but for Toronto to win, Kadeem Carey has to get the ball more than eight times. There's no way around that. He has to get the ball on this team for Toronto 15 or 20 times. He's the best, smoothest running back in the league. He can do everything. He runs with no effort. It's like, I'm, I'm, I don't want to call him Barry Sanders, but the way he rules and, and moves with the ball, you have to give him the ball a lot more than they're giving him right now. And that's usually when Toronto gets in problems by not giving him the ball as much. Even though Dukes did run the ball well and threw the ball okay, in the second half, they couldn't sustain drives like they needed to. And that's just not winning football for them. They don't have great receivers out there. They're not scaring anybody. They're, nobody on the opposite team when they play Toronto is like, oh, we're going to get ran past. And when your quarterback is not ready for the spotlight like that, like Cameron Dukes is not ready for it to be able, like as a thrower, then with average receivers, below average receivers, that, that's a big problem. You need your quarterback to be elite to make your average receivers look better than they are, or you need your receivers to be elite to make your quarterback better than, than he is. And that's the problem that they're having in Toronto right now until Chad Kelly comes back. We don't know. Will he come back after week nine? We still haven't heard anything from the commissioner, any updates. Um, I heard he was trying to practice. I don't know if that ever went through. So that's what we got going on in that game right there. Um, Demario Houston gets his third pick of the season and steals the game with a big hit from Micah Ah oh, when Toronto was down four. They needed a touchdown at the end of the game. After the big comeback, big catch by Eccles down the sideline. Jake Myers throws one up over McFadden. Eccles come down with it. Um, and they get the ball to Reggie Bagleton a lot this game because he's an important player for that team. You get him the ball, you see what he can do. He's a tough, hard-nosed son of a gun. And Calgary's problem right now is how do they continue the momentum? How do they keep it going? They go on the road. They play Toronto again. What will they do? We'll find out soon. That's going to come up in uh, next picks. Um, but right now, after we just talked about last week, let's dive into the power rankings. 
who's number one, who's number nine this week? Does it stay the same? Do we get a little bit of changes? We'll find out right now because we're going to go right into mixed power rankings. Um, Let's see. How should we do this this week? Do I want to go nine to one or one to nine? Let's go nine to one. Let's let's start off like that. Um, at number nine, it remains the same. Maybe for the last week, but we are going to go with Edmonton. We're going to keep them there. They got to prove it to us one more week with Trey Ford. I think they will, but if they win this week, things get a little bit, you know, interesting over there in Edmonton and in the West playoff. Edmonton gives itself another chance of making the playoffs like they did last year when Trey Ford got in. So we'll keep them at nine. Hamilton at eight, two and six. They were going for three wins in a row. They didn't get it done. They got stymied by Montreal. Toronto at seven, four and four. I just don't like the, their their offense dynamic right now. Their D-line is terrific. Their offense with their quarterback and the receivers, they're not giving Kadeem the ball enough. They're not giving Kadeem enough carries, and that's a problem. Care, give Kadeem carry more carries. Just give him, give him the ball, please. And maybe I'll start going back up in the power rankings at number six, Winnipeg. Um, any team that just beat the crap out of a top team like that has to go up. Um, I, I think as they get, you know, Kenny Lawler back, maybe after this bye week, look out for Winnipeg. They look like Zach Caleros is starting to find the rhythm and Pokey Wilson is becoming another receiver that they didn't expect to be that guy. But now you add him with Dembski, Lawler, um, and Brady, and maybe the O-line starts playing a little bit better like they played last game, and they get back on the roll as the season starts getting to the end. At number five, we got Calgary 4-4. Four and four. Um, Good win for them. They're going on the roll this week. Do they get a win? This is, this is what's defined their season. This will make or break their season because you can't just keep winning at home. You have to find a way to win at the roll. That's what the good teams do. Are y'all good or are y'all not? At number five, four, BC, two shaky weeks in a row. Teams are starting to play y'all in. Man, what are y'all going to do about it? Are y'all not good enough to get open? That's what it's looking like right now. Can y'all not protect y'all quarterback? That's what it's looking like right now. He's hurt. Um, Jake Doley, Doley Gala. Um, he gets to start this week. <laughs> Can he keep the team above float? Can he keep them above the water? Can he do it? He, he, we need you. He, we all need him to. Like I said, every team needs their backup quarterback to be okay enough to keep the team above water or treading water lightly or over the water, whatever you want to say, it, however you want to say it. Um, to keep the season going until your starting quarterback get hurt because it's just inevitable in this league. Tough game for your quarterback to last most of the season, unless you're just Jake Myers. He's, he's just uh, somebody who's always playing. <laughs> but other than that, we got Sask at three, five, and three. Um, back to back losses. Um, they got to get back in the win column. They got to find a way to do it with the backup quarterback until Trevor Harris gets back. Shea Patterson's playing well, though. Frankie Hickson is playing well as a backup running back. But too many backups get you L's. At the end of the day, that's just what it is. Um, you need to get your starters back. Got to get them back healthy. Got to get them back rolling. Ottawa 5-2 and two by week. Um, last time we saw them, they put a foot in Calgary's ass. And that's going to keep them. That's the last memory I have of them, so I have to put them up this week. They got a big game this week. Let's see if we can keep them up there at number two. This is probably the highest they've been in a long time in anybody's power ranking. Good for Coach Dice. Good for Ottawa. Number one, defending champs. Montreal. Who's better? Nobody's better. That defense. Tyrese Beverett. Um, the DB Ento. Um, the D line. Mustafa. Uh, uh, the middle linebacker Sankey. They're just great right now. Um, Jason Moss is the coach. Just out coaching a lot of coaches, even with the onside kick that everybody hates. He's just one step ahead of, ahead of everybody else. And and Thorpe. Defensive coordinator, also one step ahead of everybody else right now. And that's why they're number one in the power rankings, baby. And that's the power rankings for this week. Like I said, we got Edmonton at nine, Hamilton at eight, Toronto at seven, Winnipeg at six, Calgary at five, BC at four, Sask at three, Ottawa at two, and Montreal at one. This is Come On CFL. We still talking. We're about to go into Nick Picks. Last week, two and two. I'm getting better. We rolling. Um, a couple of things could have went my way. We'd have been, you know, I could, I should have bet with my heart. I 
I, I knew at Winnipeg is a tough game for BC. But I didn't think it was going to go down like that. But this week, we're on to the next week. We can't keep worrying about the next week. We're like a DB. We have a short – I am a DB. That's why I have a short-term memory. Last week was last week. This week is this week. And this is next picks this week. And this is what we're rolling with. All right. Thursday, we have Sass at Ottawa. I'm going money line, Ottawa, minus 152. Ottawa gets the win. Um, at home, that's why I like it. Um, And then, even though Sass need to win a little desperate, I'm going with Ottawa. Money line. I'm not changing my mind. That's what I'm rolling with. All right. The next game, we got Calgary at Toronto. I'm going to go. Everything is telling me not to pick Calgary. They're on four in a row. What the hell are they doing on the road that they're, that they're, that they're what are they do, doing at home that they're not doing at the road? Getting wins, obviously, but are, are y'all not focused because y'all traveling, y'all in different cities? Like, what are y'all doing? Is the head coach not? Getting y'all hype, the, the 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 leading players on the team not getting everybody hype. We have to find a way to get away a win on the road, and I'm a roll with y'all on the road this week to get another win against Toronto. Um, if Toronto's not handing the ball off to Kadeem, we're gonna go um, Calgary for the win money line uh, plus 105. Should get a good return on that one. These are Nick picks now. Just letting y'all know. Um, bet responsibly. Bet 99. Uh, the code below bet ninety nine. Use it up to fifteen hundred dollars in bet backs. Uh, Hamilton at Montreal minus seven point five. We're going with uh, Montreal for the win minus seven point five. We're gonna take that. Um, and then we're gonna go BC and Edmonton. Who tough game? Um, BC starting quarterback is out. Vernon Adams out. Jake Dolegala is starting this week at quarterback Edmonton minus one. I'm taking Edmonton, and I'm taking the over at 48.5. I think there will be some points scored. So that will be my other pick I'm giving y'all this week is the over on that one. That's a, a plus bet. I'm, I'm just giving y'all a little something, something extra to add to it. So that's next picks for this week. Um, and we literally went over everything this week, man. We, we talked about things that's going on. Big games this week. Who's going to get the win? Um, the referees have to be better again. Um, there's some calls that's just not – it's just becoming a problem, and we have to fix this. Even if we're going to the to the boot, we got to get the calls correct. Um, it's, cha- it's not changing the games sometimes because um, Hamilton gets away with a fumble and Montreal still wins the game. But we got to fix that problem, man. Um and this brings us to the best players of the week. Who was outstanding? Who made the plays that needed to be made? Who put, helped put the team over the top? Who was paying attention to meetings this week and knew about what was going to happen before it happened, studied film, and was just the Nick Taylor's Old Canada's Old Canada's Player of the Week? Oh, okay. all right. We're not gonna sing the song this week. No Rudy, no song. Um, on the offensive side, we're gonna go with Javon TD Leaks. He had, huh, 169 yards rushing, off of 12 carries, three catches for another 26 yards. He's uh, he was just dynamic. Anytime a big play needed to be made, he made it. He was explosive. He scored three touchdowns in one game. What a average of over 10 yards per carry he was just downright tremendous to go along with Trey Ford um their offense was just through the roof against Sass they had no answers for these guys um offensive player of the week goes out to Javon Leakes man um on the defensive side how can I not give it to somebody on Winnipeg's defense they gave up a 102 yards of total offense net offense to bc so i'm looking through the roster I'm like who can i give it to on their team and i'm gonna start it off with tyrell ford he was the fighting starter he ignited the whole flame for winnipeg defense he started off the game with a big interception that changed the whole momentum of bc going in to get at least three points on the board and they end up with zero points for the night so tyrell tyrell ford with an interception uh i'm gonna give him a pass breakup it might have hit the DB, the receiver on his head, but Tyrell Ford was in the way enough to 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 make the, the catch harder for the receiver. Hands was in there, um, so I'm gonna give him a PBU. 
I'm going to give him the defensive player of the week, the old Canada, old Canada defensive player of the week, because, damn, somebody on their defense got to get it, because I can't give it out to the whole defense. I had to pick one person on the team on a, you know, who, who held it down, and he was that guy. He's becoming a nice you know, um, addition to the team as he came back from the NFL at the field side corner. You throw it over there, he's booking it. So good job for Tyrell. Good job for Javon Leeds. Those are the two O Canada, O Canada player of the week. Let's see who gets it next week. Maybe those guys again. We'll see. That's what we got for this week of Come On CFL, baby. Presented by Come On Now, the podcast. Partner with Bet99. Follow, subscribe, hit that button below. Man, everything CFL brought to you by Three Cup, three time Great Cup champion Nick Taylor. Um, another fun episode. I'm going to keep bringing y'all that heat. Y'all keep rocking with me every week, and we're going to do what we do. Tune in next week for the next episode. Like I say, hit that follow button, baby. Um, we're on, you know, we're on everything. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. We're on, uh, uh, whatever you, you see down below, you click it, you follow us and keep, keep paying attention, man. We're going to keep bringing you all that heat. Um, like I say, have a good, have a good week. Another great week of the CFL football tune in. I sure will. This is come on now. Have a good day. We'll be out, baby.